means a lot to me, and it means a lot to Michelle. Now, uh, some of you may have heard uh, there's an election coming up. These <laughs> issues are front and center, as they should be. But I think the conversation's been oversimplified a little bit. I bet anyone who spends a little time at your conference would realize pretty fast that women are not a monolithic block. You're not an interest group. You make up more than half of our country and nearly half of our workforce, not to mention 80% of my household, if you count my mother. <laughs> so for me, any discussion of the issues women face begins uh, with my own life story and the women in my uh, own life. There was my mom, who was a single mother who put herself through school and made sure my sister and I earned our educations too. There was my grandmother, who worked her way up from a secretary to vice president at her local bank, uh, even though she hit a glass ceiling and watched men she once trained pass her by. Uh, when Michelle and I got married and had our girls, we were giving it our all to balance raising a family and pursuing our careers. You know, and, and we wished we had a machine that would let us be two places at one time. Uh, and of course, as a father, the highlight of my day is asking my girls about their days. So, you know, when I think about what's been most important in my life, uh, it's these amazing relationships that I've had with my mother and grandmother, my wife and my daughters. And what drives me when I step into the Oval Office, every decision that I make is making sure that all of our daughters, just like all of our sons, are growing up in a country that gives them the chance to be anything they set their minds to in a country where more doors are open to them than were open to the previous generation. That's why the first bill I signed was the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. Now I want to strengthen those protections. And that's why we've extended more loans to women-owned businesses. That's why we've cut taxes for small business owners 18 times. I also want to keep small business taxes low in the future. That's why we've enacted education reform that's helped more than 2.3 million more young women afford to pursue higher education. And now I want to make sure uh, even more can afford to go. And because of the new health care reform law, Obamacare, I <laughs> happily accept <laughs> Children with pre existing conditions can't be denied insurance. Tens of millions of women with private insurance now have access to preventive care like mammograms and are beginning to get access to contraception at no additional cost. Because of pre existing conditions like cancer or pregnancy, or charge you higher premiums just for being a woman. I'm not going to give any ground to those who would deny women their own health care choices. All right! Yeah. these policies is a pretty simple idea. You, women, should have control over the decisions that affect your health, your lives, your careers. Thank you. Sure that and I think you would agree that the choice women face right now in this election could not be bigger. On one hand, you have folks who plan to turn back the clock. They promise to take away access to health care and contraception. They talk about getting rid of vital services like Planned Parenthood. They're planning to spend trillions of dollars on new tax cuts way towards millionaires and billionaires. And just yesterday, an independent nonpartisan organization ran the numbers. They found that in order for my opponent to pay for his tax plan, He'd have to cut tax rates that middle class families depend on to pay for your home or your health care or to send your kids to college. Which means the average middle class family with children would be hit with a tax increase of more than $2,000. On top of that tax increase, my opponent plan, uh, plans to also got education programs that help low income mothers, student aid that disproportionately benefits young women. So this overall is what I consider a wrong approach. It's not how we're going to grow this economy. It's not how we're going to build the middle class. We can't afford to refight the battles of the past few years or the past century 
for that matter. And that's why my plan would move us forward by cutting taxes for the middle class, investing in education, protecting equal pay, and making sure your health care is there for you when you need it. And I pay for my plan by asking people like me to go back to the same tax rates we paid during the Clinton years. So, so that's the choice we face as a company. And, and even though we're dealing with some big challenges right now, I've never been more confident that the ability to solve our problems is entirely within our grasp. If we choose the right path, I'm absolutely confident we're going to restore the sense of economic security that ought to be at the center of American life. We'll create an economy that works for everybody. We'll open up new doors of opportunity for our daughters as well as our sons. We'll build our middle class. We'll grow this economy, not from the top down, but from the middle out and from the bottom up. And that's not just good for women. That's good for all of us. So thank you so much for the opportunity. We appreciate it.
wanted some time that did not compete with conference programming to visit the this year Boy Parade. 130 sponsors to the Expo These are the sponsors who make it possible for us to pay a grassroots price because our ticket charges do not cover the cost of feeding us the way we do or bringing in the speakers that we have. So I hope you will go there, meet them, and thank them for their support to make things like this possible. And then the dancing. Right, so after the evening at the Expo, which because of the growth, we had to expand to also the Rhinelander Gallery and the Mercury Ballroom, we have sponsors in three different places, um, that's from 6 to 8, if Lisa said, and then starting at 8 o'clock is the 6th Annual People's Party, um, which I can't believe has been going on that long, and then at 10 o'clock we have Queerosphere, which is the 4th Annual. People's Party is in America's too. And Queerosphere is in the Trianon Ballroom. And uh, it's going to be a hot evening, and not just because of the weather outside. So <laughs> we've got a little bit of time before the expo opens up. So we really want to thank you for taking thank time you. to come here earlier than expected uh, to hear this address. We appreciate your flexibility. We appreciate that you were all here. And we look forward to partying with you all weekend long. Welcome, and thank you.